Making some new friends, Kurt? Come on. Wait. One day, you all work for me. Damn, Kurt, this car is fly. My dad got it for my sweet 16 after I swore to stop wearing form-fitting sweaters that stop at the knee. What he doesn't know doesn't hurt him. You make this, and you die a legend. Can I pee first? Oh, Bambi. I cried so hard when those hunters shot your mommy. <laughs> Though I've been grouped with the boys, my allegiance still remains with you ladies. They declined my offer to do their hair in cornrows, and all my artistic decisions have been derided as too costly because they involve several varieties of exotic bird feathers. Do it. I really don't want to, honestly. I know how picky you are about what products you use on your face. But you've been getting so much pressure from the gorillas on the football team. I guess they didn't appreciate me resigning from the team and choosing Glee. Probably would have went over better if you didn't announce it in the showers. Raise your right hand. Your right hand, Brittany. Sorry. your pink brain for a second why hello Quinn to what do I owe the honor I do believe this is the first time you've ever spoken to me I said we lock Rachel up until after sectionals I volunteer my basement we can't we need her to sing damn her talent we're glitterati I feel like Lady Gaga oh, get used to it guys we're stars I'm a star you can learn from me we were already fighting for second leads and now that you've shown up I've lost all hope at ever getting a solo but I guess that one's nice Wall? I always pegged you as a chinoiserie type. Where did you get this? I can tell you that I certainly did not steal it from her locked file cabinet yesterday when she sent me back to her office to get a hormone replacement injection during Cheerios practice. <laughs> can you excuse us for a minute, Bo? What? Just go away. Ra, ra, ah, ah, ga, ga, ooh, la, la, want your bad romance. Vocal adrenaline has sure put us all in a funk. I'm so depressed I've worn the same outfit twice this week. What? So is that a men's sweater? Fashion has no gender. Ah! Oh my god. Our thoughts are all with Kurt, and uh... I had something I wanted to talk to you about. Oh, please, not another pregnancy. I, I think that you and I are a little bit more similar than you think. That's a terrible thing to say. It was deep, but I swam it. Janet. Mashup ideas in my emergency mashup. Kurt, gonna say it again. Boys team. Okay, how about you put your suggestions? Are you on anything? Cause this is trippy. You smell homeless, Brett. Homeless. I will take care of it from here. I have a trunk full of wedding magazines hidden under my bed. I'm thinking of a uh, russet and cognac theme. Oh, those are colors, Finn. Fall wedding colors. And no one knows how to kill a ballad quite like you. You are as brilliant and talented as you are irritating. So what brings you here? Are you looking for teaching at a place where pencils aren't primarily used as weapons? Why hasn't Finn told me anything about this? I mean, we live together. I mean, I bring him a glass of warm milk every night just in hopes that we'll have a little lady chat. Warm milk? Really? It's delicious. No one here knows I'm gay. Can I be honest? Just with the hair? I think they do. Okay, I think we've had enough of that. What are those? Those are some pamphlets that I picked up from the free clinic. I thought it might help the process along because it is time you and I had the talk. Oh, it's not. Yes, it is. You told me to la, educate la, myself. La, la, hey, you think la, this is easy la, for me? La, la, okay, la, believe la. me. I'm so sorry, Kurt. I know this is really upsetting for you. Reminds you of your mom's funeral, doesn't it? The casket was bigger. I'll take it from here. Nice effort. But only I can lead this barb invention. Is she here? No, this is a mall in Ohio. Will you go to junior prom with me? Prom? It'll be the social event of the season. You don't want to go to prom with me? Don't use the fact that Jesse and I once had feelings for each other as an excuse for my inevitable win. Correction, you had feelings for him. He made breakfast on your head. And now here we are at the top of the show choir heap. <laughs> I want to hit up Central Park, get my frolic on. I want to throw stuff off the Brooklyn Bridge. Guys, hold on. I mean, we still have two songs to write. Okay, Mr. Bossy Pants. You're quiet. No, I'm being passive aggressive. Laugh. <laughs> 
they'll bend in half. Did you ever hear the story about the traveling salesman? A thousand jokes. Stick around for the jokes. If anyone else got Tony, including me, the wrath of Sondheim would fall upon William McKinley like a plague of Sherwood Alley locusts. <laughs> Rule wisely. Rule fabulously. See, this is why I don't have a high maintenance girlfriend. Or any girlfriend for that matter. Who told you? Kurt? No. Yes. <gasps> Screw this. I'm getting a little cheesecake. Don't tell me you agree with me when I saw you kicking dirt in my eye. Okay, I'm going home right now to yell at Finn because this is insane. That is not fair, Kurt. I mean, what would you do if Blaine proposed to you today? Oh, see his candies. Dear Kurt, happy Valentine's Day. I think I love you. Wait, you, you think you love me? You give a bad name to the entire gay community. And you give the gay community cutting-edge fashion that's usually only seen on Puerto Rican pride floats. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. I was distracted by your giant horse teeth. You, so do what I do. Ask the director. Is this scene comedic or dramatic? He will know you're an actor who's not afraid to ask the tough questions, right? Why are you writing this stuff? Okay, Everybody warned me that when you were eight and you were bugging the crap out of me, that one day I'd be begging for you to wake me up at 4 a.m., with a nightmare or, you know, wreck the kitchen, play in a restaurant. I was nine. Who knew paella was going to be so complicated? I'm your biggest fan. I've been to every last one of your performances, except West Side Story. I boycotted that one because you two weren't Tony and Maria. Why, hello, kind sir. I don't believe I caught your name. Nothing ever seems like it used to be. You can have your dreams. Oh, but you can't have me. Prom sucks. I don't want to go either. Well, you have to go. You're the reigning prom queen. You have to crown the next one. As much as I love a good coronation, I can't risk it. With this school's strong and insane tradition of right and ballots, I could get elected prom queen again. All right? And I know I put on a brave face last year, but it was humiliating. And had I known, I would have worn a full kilt. Okay, just because I'm gay does not mean I like to dress up like a woman. Oh, come on. What about Halloween, Kurt? Trick or treat. Bada bing. Hey, what's a guy got to do to get a candy situation up in here, huh? Taking my bows and my curtain calls. Kurt Hummel. Trying to recapture little other Gloria. Well, the time slips away and leaves you with nothing, Mr. Fudd. Boring stories of Gloria. Shouldn't you be in college or something? I thought gay people were all successful overachievers. I am oh, a successful. Oh, don't pay attention to what Kitty thinks, even if it's exactly what the rest of the world thinks. I've spent the entire weekend trying to choose the absolute perfect outfit because I've snagged an interview at, drumroll please, Hi, I'm Kurt Hummel, Vogue.com. I'm gonna take this down to the park and watch drug deals go down. We don't have the money. Kurt's an intern, and I spent all of my money on my last trip home, so. Well... I could give you my JetBlue frequent flyer miles. I can't use them for since I was banned from. And maybe if it's cold enough, we can go ice skating on the All Grays River and get hot chocolate anywhere but the lima bean because when I was working there, I saw a mouse. There's only one problem. I, I think that's a song that Carmen hates. And I can't do it without a costume or props. You don't need any of that stuff. Yes, I do. You know that I'm not my best when I have my careful assortment of bells and whistles, my steel scaffolding or my gold lame pants. <laughs> If you're not going to come to Lima, then my dad's and I insist you come with us to the Rosie O'Donnell Gay Holiday Cruise. It's going to be so much fun. There's even going to be a Jesse Tyler Ferguson lookalike contest. Well, in that case, I'm definitely going to have to pass. And if they're at the top of the social pyramid, then once again, I'm at the bottom. A year ago, you were all plaid skirts, and do you think Finn likes me? And now you're slutty Barbie. Asking misogynist Ken to move in with you, doing pornos. What's happening to you? You have to come with. I don't think so. I think you both are shallow and obnoxious. And I think the only reason why you run around kissing everyone's ass is because you know you'll never make it on your own. And another thing, if you say one more nasty thing about Adam's apples, I will challenge you to the next Midnight Madness. And we all know how that ends. Ooh, baby cupcakes. I'm with you. I 
love being held in Bruce's warm, non-judgmental embrace. And yes, I named him Bruce. Yes, yes. Thank you so much, thank you. You are the apple of my eye. So relax. Hear what the guy has to say. I mean, all you gotta do is say yes, no, or maybe. Is there another option? He was a much better person than I am. That is true. Hello, welcome to Spotlight. I'm Kurt. I'll be your chorus boy waiter today. You've become boring. You go to class and then you come home and you watch your stories and you eat all this food and you Skype with Blaine and it's not even sexy Skyping. I know this because you just go to sleep. Same thing every day. I change up my afternoon smoothie occasionally. Says, look at me, I'm the center of attention and this primary color proves it. Somebody's gonna come out for... Our covers of Madonna's greatest hits? I disagree, Danny. Oh. People, everybody's bringing something essential to the mix. Right, right. Said Beyonce right before she left Destiny's Child. She was better. Oh, but you're talented. saying something. Rachel, quit hogging the bathroom. I'm never coming out of here. <laughs> That's what I said sophomore year of high school. Blaine bought a couch off the back of a truck because apparently the furniture I carefully chose from Chelsea's finest flea markets isn't that comfortable. It was a mid-century knockoff, so I gave him an A for effort, but as soon as I lifted up one of the cushions, I saw that the entire couch was riddled with... Look at your beautiful face. I'm not upset about it, actually. I'm kind of hoping for a scar. Is that weird? Yes. It's weird. <laughs> Whoa, Artie. You want to talk about it? Talk about what? Oh my god, that looks really delicious. What you're burying in your worry hole with all that hot fudge and nuts? The only thing oh, like Barry's got in common with Streisand is her ginormous schnapps. <laughs> Someone call the bomb squad, because funny girl will no doubt be a funless flop. How do I look? Like Montgomery Clift. What? Before the accident. Oh, thank you. Take me home tonight. I'm the luckiest guy in the world. Yeah, pretty much. Well, we know that in the past, the Glee Club and the AV Club have had friendly relations, and we plan to keep that intact. And we promise to learn your names, yes. And that goes to the band, too. If you really want to get Blaine back, here's what you do. First, promise him you're going to burn all your clothing, and then tell him you're going to start dressing like a normal person. Then, I think you should really start getting honest with him about following your life's ambition, which is becoming America's top Barbara Bush impersonator. That's not my life's ambition. <laughs> so there he is. Okay, guys. Rachel and I are extremely excited to kick off this week's lesson with our uh, first musical lesson, Jagged Little Tapestry. Oh. I'd know you anywhere. I mean, you look just like your photo. Yeah, and your photo definitely looks like you at some point in time. Hello, Clean. Let's play a game. You're trapped in an elevator. This isn't an elevator. You're trapped in an elevator. Okay, Wait. I know who can officiate. Who? Bert. Who is? Bert Hummel. I don't know. I don't know who that is. It's my dad. It's his dad. She made a fake elevator, which she trapped us in, and then pumped airborne drugs through the vents and built a small robot that forced us to kiss while it watched and made noises. I'll teach you the proper ploys when you talk to boys. 